Hey, this is Craig the Pool Man with Pool Specialists. Today's video is on how to automate a Jandy pump. We have both versions of the pump. We have what I refer to as the stealth variable speed, and then we also have the float pro variable speed. And they're slightly different. They actually automate the same. And this is to automate them to what I'm gonna to refer to as the legacy RS-485 connection. Uh, the newer concept of how they connect is a little bit different and we're gonna have a video of that coming forward as that capability comes out. But this is the standard, most of the equipment that is available today, which would be June of 2024, will be automated through legacy and hope that is helpful. We will go ahead and show you the details on this. Important things to know. There is only one circuit breaker that is manufactured that is intended for pool equipment. And that is the Siemens breaker. Pentair and Siemens work through it um, to neutralize out some of the noise on the bonding or grounding, however you want to look at it, and eliminate false tripping. So the Siemens breaker is what you're gonna to need to use. The Eaton breaker will not work. It will falsely trip, and most of the time, the colder it gets, the more false trips you get out of it. And you definitely do not want it tripping in the winter time when it's freezing. And 90% of the time, that's when the Eaton breaker or the other breakers like it trip. You'll notice that how big this circuit breaker is. And if you look at the Eaton breaker or some of the other ones, they're only from here to here. So you have to use a GFI circuit breaker it, with the electrical code when you're connected to a pump. So this is a Siemens breaker Pentair sells a Pentair breaker, which in reality is the Siemens breaker. They just label it with their own stuff. So make sure that when you're replacing a, a pump with a variable speed, that you have the Siemens GFI circuit breaker. And you can buy that on Amazon. There will be a link below in the comments to tell you what exact breaker this is. Make sure you get a Siemens breaker and not an Eaton breaker or some other brand. All right, next is the pumps are actually computer controlled. So example is if you press the go button on your computer to, to boot it up and then you started typing in on the keyboard before it was actually booted up, nothing would happen right? You wouldn't get any of those keystrokes. Well, the exact same concept is with your pump. And so the pump has to be up and running and booted before it can get the communications. So what you'll find that you actually do is you hotwire the pumps. So the pumps are hotwired. So, and you can hotwire them on the relays up here just so that they are on all the time. You could either run the wire into the relay, and as you can see, this is the relay for the actual um, one pump, and that would be the waterfall pump, which is the Flow Pro. And then the other pump, we actually have wired directly into the circuit breaker. It's just so that we didn't have the, the room to get it into the actual relay up top. So that's the important thing. The pump has to be on all the time. So you want that pump to have power even though none of these lights are on. If it doesn't and you turn the system on, it hasn't booted, it is likely that it's not going to get the correct information downloaded. Okay, so now the next thing is of course, this is connected through this connector right here, which is known as a RS-485. All 
All right. So on the Janny board, they give you two of them. And be, feel free to use both of them. This actually has a jumper over to a Jandy communication board, which I have on the side. You want to make sure that you never use more than one set of wires in this connector. Because when you start putting two sets of wires in that connector, it makes it unreliable where they both get a connection. And that's why they offer a communication board. And this communication board is going to be down in the comments that you can purchase on Amazon. So use that communication expansion board and everything has its own individual connector and that is your RS-485 connector. All right, this is what I refer to as a Jandy Stealth Variable Speed Pump. And you'll see that it's wired up here. The way that this is set up is really nice and convenient. It is so nice to have a large area to work with other than that tiny little spot on the back of a single phase pump. So it's much more open, easier to work with, easier to connect. So we have our two power lines coming in. We have our ground. And then these are actually auxiliary relays that can be set up through the programming of the pump that will could turn on a salt system or it could allow a heater to be turned on, etc. And so there's separate relays that are programmable. There is a version of this pump coming out that does not include those relays because these, of course, increase the cost of it. Over here, we have the automation section. And so what you're going to notice is you have that same RS-485 connector and it is wired up the same way. So pin number one is red, two is black three is yellow and four is green. And it is very important that you keep that consistent across everything. And they are labeled, so it says R, B, Y, and G. Hopefully you can figure out that that means red, black, yellow, green. Next, you'll see these dip switches. On the real older pumps, you'll notice four dip switches. And one and two don't really do anything. So you'll notice that these are labeled three and four. And the position that they are currently in is in the off position. And that means that this pump is address number one. And that's going to be very important for you to know that when we get to the next section of this video where we show you how to actually configure it. So pump three and four are off. This gives me a pump one address. Now, I want you to take note that this says serial address, and it tells you what the serial address is. Now, we're gonna do a video on this, but from this point forward, the future versions of the Aqualink RS will automatically go out and find this pump and it will put it in as a variable speed pump. So that variable speed pump will then identify itself automatically. So pumps one through four are assignable in legacy mode. If you have a new pump and it has a serial address on it, it will automatically populate in five and then you're gonna have to define what that is and that's in another video we're not showing this in this video because this is an older system and we cannot take advantage of the serial address so this is the flow pro variable speed version so you'll see it's a little bit different but again you have a the top opens up real nice and clean and you can wire up your your power which is its own separate compartment and then you can bring in your communication cable, which goes to this four pin connector, that RS-485 connector. Again, it's red, black, yellow, green. And now if you look, if you can see all the way over here, we have that little blue dip switch again. And what we've done is we've taken one of these and 
we've turned it on so that we've changed the address. So we want number three to be on and that makes it address number two. So this pump is going to be set up as two. And again, this is done in legacy mode with that dip switch, which is very similar to the dip switch in the Stealth. And this will be assigned later. We'll show you exactly how to assign this and make it all work. Um, again, this particular pump is a newer variable speed and does have a serial address. So if we had a brand new automation system, then we would have to go ahead and automate it using the serial address. We have cleared the memory on this system so that it looks brand new as though it would be out of the box. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to come into menu, click on that, and now we're going to have to start our system setup. And we're going to start with all our auxiliary labels just for ease of use. And auxiliary two is going to be a waterfall. So there we have that. Um, we're going to leave all the other auxiliaries as they are right now. We'll save that and we're going to go back. So now one of the things you want to make sure is go into freeze protect. And of course the filter pump is always going to be on by default, but you probably just for safety reasons want to turn on that other pump, the waterfall. So you'll see the X. So save that. And now we're going to do our variable speed pump setup. So in the legacy, it, it doesn't really know about that pump. So you have to tell it which pump you have. If you're putting in a Janney pump, they're, it, they're going to be the E pumps because the other two options are the Pentair and Teleflow um, for variable speed and then for variable flow. So this is an E-pump. Our pump number one, if you recall, is our filter pump. So the application is going to be filtration. We're going to save that. And while we're here, we might as well define our other pump, which was our waterfall pump. So that is going to be an auxiliary pump. And that has the identification of two. So those are those dip switches that we spoke about. Um, so they follow binary numbering. So with them both off, you consider that position one, then you, oh, then you turn on position one in the switches or position three technically, and that would give you an address of two. So that's our second pump that we addressed. I usually just go ahead and leave the priming speeds the way they are. If you're far above grade, you're probably going to want to max them out. Duration of three, three minutes is fine. If you're below grade, you may just want to take this down to nothing. So we're going to go and click on set speeds. First, we're going to do the filtration pump. And uh, just for the heck of it, I'm going to say that the pool needs to run at 2800 RPMs. And now you can set up everything you want here. I'm going to point out, of course, if you're in pool mode, how fast it's going, spa mode. Spillover is very popular with the pool spa combos. And then pool heat is very important as well. Depending on the hydraulics of your system, this may be fast enough, but you may need to go up around 2,800 or 3,000. So these are all your um, assignments to this auxiliary. When you're talking about setting up the filter pump, 
you do not have to assign the auxiliaries. It already knows where to get that information. So pump one is our filter pump. We want to set up our freeze protect speed. 2500 is fine for this application. So we'll just leave it with the default. We save all this and we go back. Now we want to set the speed on the auxiliary pump. And so we choose the auxiliary pump. Then next, we come in here and of course this we're just going to label waterfall. So just for ease of use, we'll go and do a custom name and that would be water save that that's now called waterfall and of course we're going to assign it to auxiliary 2 which is also what we defined as waterfall so as that updates we want to should have gotten it to there we go up sometimes I double click so we have the X next to 2 we save it now waterfall then we want to check our freeze protect speed and that's fine for our freeze protect there are other capabilities with this of course if you wanted to have a slide and you opened the valve of the slide so the speed has to go up so then you can change this here as well um, for this application what we the customer and I had determined that 2800 RPMs was his ideal setting as it's going through a actually filter what's called a waterfall filter and um, that will protect debris from getting into the backside of the shear descents so we ha we have the waterfall and if that filter starts to get more clogged we can increase our speed we could also have a second circuit and assign a faster speed to it if it required something to provide more water. We come back here and now we have everything programmed for both of those pumps to be automated. Now I had mentioned about what's called the legacy mode and one of the ways you can tell whether you have an older or a newer rev if you have the latest rev or the newer revs you're going to have a little settings wheel up here in the corner you could also go into help which will tell you about the board and you can see that this is a rev t2 and if you have a regular Aqualink RS, it would have to be greater, equal to or greater than a Rev O2. And if that was a PDA version, it would have to be equal to or greater than a Rev 5.0. So those are the two key, key critical items that you want to check before you actually set up for the variable speed pump. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you found it educational. If you did find it beneficial, please give us a thumbs up and follow us. Thank you so much for watching the video and have a great day.